Hi, welcome. This video is going to show you a little bit of information and notation about inscribed angles and circles. Um, it, we'll start off kind of with the definition, but I'll show you as well what I'm talking about in the picture below. Um, so an inscribed angle has its vertex on the edge of a circle with its two rays extending to or through the circle. So if you're kind of new to geometry, some of these words aren't going to make sense. So an inscribed angle, we're talking about this angle here that I'm tracing over. Its vertex has to be on the edge or on the circumference of the circle. So that's the vertex. B is the vertex. It's where the two parts of the angle come together. Um, and it says that it's two rays. Um, the two rays is AB, this one here. That's one ray. And BC is the other. So they have to start at that vertex and extend to or through the circle. So sometimes these will kind of come out and um, cover like that. So those would also be, it would still be an inscribed circle. I'm just going to erase those because um, I blocked the letters. Okay, there we go. Much better. Um, so let's just talk a little bit about notation before we jump into some problems. Um, the uh, angle that we would talk about, we could write it this way. We always want to have the vertex as the middle letter. So we can write this as angle ABC would be our inscribed angle. We could also call it um, CBA. Notice that the uh, B is in the middle of both of, of both of those ways to write it. Um, we couldn't say that this is angle BAC. That is not correct because the B is the vertex. It has to be in the center. All right. If you look at the formula here, an inscribed angle, the measure of that has to equal half the intercepted arc. Again, math sometimes really likes to use uh, some scary words that sound really intimidating. Well, what is an intercepted arc? It just means that when the angle comes out, it hits the circle in two places, and the arc in between it is the intercepted arc. So if you look here, where I'm um, going in green, that is arc AC. And there's also notation for arcs. If I want to name that arc, I put A next to C. Those are the beginning and ending parts, and I put a little arc above it. It would also be correct to call this arc CA. It honestly doesn't matter which direction you go in. So if we have angle ABC, it intercepts arc AC. Um, why do we use this notation? We use the notation so that we don't have to write out the words. You'll see in the next few problems that we do, I actually typed the words out because I don't know how in this software program that I'm using to create videos, I can get um, the arc symbol over it or the angle symbol to look correct. Um, so just before we start some problems that are all kind of laid out for us, let's just say that, um, let's say that they gave us that arc AC here is 78 degrees, um, and we were asked to find the measure of angle ABC. So, um, the measure, of, oh, and this is also notation. You might see an M with the angle symbol. That just means measure of, because again, we don't want to have to keep writing out the word measure. So the measure of angle ABC is going to be one half of 78 degrees. Um, and if you're not super great at that, you can just grab a calculator if you want. Um, but you should get that the angle is 39 degrees. Um, we're not going any further with it, but I usually like to put my answer in the problem itself as well as circle the answer that I got. Um, all right, let's move on to another problem. Um, there's two more. If you're feeling really good about this already, you could hit pause, copy these problems down and do them, um, and then see if you get them right. The, there's a problem on the next slide that's got a, it's a little bit kick, little bit kick up. Um, it kicks it up a little bit. It's not super difficult, though. So if we look at our top circle here, um, we have um, that we have to find the value of x. That is an inscribed angle. And the intercepted arc measures 82 degrees. So we know that arc AC equals 82. And so we know that the measure of angle ABC is going to be half of that, half of 82. And again, if you cut 82 in half, you get 41 degrees. The bottom triangle, um, again, we have an inscribed angle. And we know, it's, we're told in the picture, that the measure of that inscribed angle is 70. Our task is to find the measure of arc XY. Again, I couldn't figure out how to make that notation correct in the software that I'm using. Um, so what we're looking for is the measure of XY, the arc. And um, the arc is actually double the angle. We know that the angle is half. So we have to double it to find the arc. So this one's a little bit different than the previous two problems. We were given the angle in this one, finding the arc. The last two problems we did, we were um, given the arc and we had to find the angle. Um, so XY, that arc, has to equal 2 times 70, which is 140 degrees. All right. 
Uh, let's see our top picture here. We have a circle with an arc that we can see and P is 100. We are asked to find the measure of angle NMP. So NMP is here. We're looking for that. That is an inscribed angle. So the inscribed angle is going to be half of the intercepted arc, which is half of 100. So our answer will be 50 degrees. Uh, this last problem here is just a smidge different. We're asked to find the measure of angle C. Um, notice that they only used one letter for that. And um, we're not given the intercepted arc. So it might feel a little bit odd at first. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to work our way around. <laughs> no pun intended. So we have a circle here. And the angles of a circle are always 360. Um, so we have 360 degrees all the way around. And they did give us a couple of arcs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add up 153 plus 89. So just to show my work here, 153 plus 89 the total of that when I add them up is 242. So whatever is left over of this circle will give us arc AB, all right? So 360 total degrees in a circle, when we subtract out the 242, what that's gonna give us is 118. So now I know that arc AB is 118. I can now find angle C because I know that the angle is half the arc. So angle C is going to be half the arc, and that arc is 118. And when you cut 118 in half, you get 59 degrees. All right, there, is, um, there are sometimes problems with inscribed angles where they bring in the algebra. Um, but if you always kind of start off with um, the formula that the angle equals half the arc, and then plug in what you know, you might have an X in there somewhere or a Y or something. Um, but if you kind of always start with this, it might help out. I don't have a video yet of that, um, but you can look through my YouTube channel. I might have created one since I've made this. So, all right, I hope this helped.